about a month ago, I made a whirlwind trip through Berlin. I was there to attend the annual Superbooth Synthesizer Festival. One of the most exciting things I did on that trip was drop in on Heinbach. For those who don't know, Heinbach is a composer, electronic musician, and YouTuber. If you don't follow his YouTube channel, you absolutely should. I'm a huge fan of his work. He and I have about an 80% overlap in our interests. So much so, in fact, that at one point we were actually working on making the same video at the same time, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Heinbach Studio has three distinct areas where you can make music. What you're seeing here is the main studio room, the room that's most often featured in his videos. And yes, it contains even more musical toys than I could have imagined. But first, let's go down to the basement, where Heinbach has assembled a unique sonic laboratory. Each of these boxes is a vintage signal generator, or a filter, that used to live in a lab or radio station somewhere. Although they're now being used to make music, none of these units were designed for that purpose. At the heart of this setup is a Pulsar 23 from Soma Laboratories. Which is arguably one of the most powerful drum machines yeah. ever made. And I love the sequencing on it. I love how it interfaces with everything. But since my sounds are the test equipment, I use it as a sequencer only. Or the Which symbol. Which is amazing. Yeah. Or the symbol. So yeah, that's something the symbol is like. That There's no equivalent to this beautiful symbol anywhere here. So this, I use this. To make a rhythm, he just taps on the pulsar's pads and the wall comes to life. I love using the pulsar mm -hmm. because it's, you can just play rhythm, which works really cool with something like the test equipment. It's intense, like the rhythms you can get, and especially when you run it after through something like this, which is a passive bump pass filter, you get these woody clicks. Why does it sound like that? That's great. It's, there's mostly, this is all coils, basically. Okay. And the way they are wound makes everything sound super good. I, why, why is that? I don't know, but they don't make them like that anymore. Now that he's got a beat going, he's free to add more generators into the mix. He describes the way each box sounds by likening it to a different material. Just sings way more uh, lyrically. Mm -hmm. Then the UBMs, UBMs are like earth and rock, and this is like water. Okay, time to try another rhythm. There are a few other sonic toys in this basement studio. There's this vintage public address system, which probably came out of a train station. This Trans Europa Express in Düsseldorf in 10 minutes. And then there's this instrument called a Klavioleen. It's a vacuum tube synthesizer, which was invented in 1947. It has a distinctive buzzy sound. Some of the keys on the high end are broken. Exactly. That's where you go. So have you sampled this yet? No. See, that's my first question. <laughs> I did my best to come up with a melody to go over his drum beat. tell I'm really getting into it because I'm swaying back and forth. It's like I'm going around a curve in Mario Kart. Because Heinbach works with so many different instruments, his touring setup changes depending on what material he's making and the other musicians he's working with. I have a show called Schlaufenzeit and an album that I'm recording and there I played with maybe a third of this stuff. Yeah, this is hard. It was hard to figure out because it's a whole lot of gear. I need a, I need a roadie and suddenly like the cost of this becomes prohibitive. When he's not making music with the test equipment, he does have a more lightweight setup that he tours with. I've got a tape recorder, little. Yeah. I've got a Nagra here in my bag. Well, it's little-ish. Yeah, and I got a backpack where most of my Seattle Lombard is. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a, a luggage case with all the merch and my clothing. After fooling around with the clavioline some more, we headed upstairs. There's a nook containing an ARP2600 clone. This particular 2600 was made in Sweden by THC. The original ARP2600 was actually created in Newton, Mass, the town where I grew up. Despite that, I'd never used one before, so it was really fun to try. Oy. Nice. I don't know what I did. I, I was surprised the... by the layout of the controls. Yeah. I really didn't know what I was doing. Got the filter in the middle, the top one. This one? Yeah, this one, yeah. Oh, come on. 
It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> we messed with our sequence a bit more and ended on this thing that sounded like spooky 70s soundtrack music. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to do anything else on Right, exactly. It's done. It's a, it's a soundtrack. At which point, Heinbach got up this thing. We'll just add some tension. It's a solar synthesizer called the Tucante Carper. The final stop on our tour was Heinbach's main studio room, where he has something special he wants to show me. But here. <laughs> and it's... So here's the backstory on this. A while back, I made a video about the magical musical thing, a unique toy from the late 70s that featured an analog oscillator. When I dug into it, I discovered that its inventor, Frank Eventoff, had made another, more fleshed out musical instrument called the Sonica. Although I did manage to talk to Frank Eventoff for my video, I wasn't actually able to get my hands on a Sonica because only 600 had been made and they're now selling for high collector's prices. Well, unbeknownst to me, Heinbach was sitting in Berlin and working on the very same video at the same time. And he actually had a Sonica. I first got this and was like, oh, this is very cool. And then I got the Mattel musical thing, which is also somewhere up there. And I was like, I'm going to make a video. Yeah. I want to talk about this. But I couldn't reach the guy. Oh, really? So I tried through Sensel to contact him and I tried like to contact him via LinkedIn that all got delayed and then you made your video. Oh. And I was like, oh, I scooped you. I okay, scooped yeah. So it's okay, so that's no point, but that's not perfect because now there's like, this is like the missing link to everything. It is actually. Yeah, so because you couldn't show it because you didn't have that. I didn't have it, yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can get this to run now because I think there's a battery compartment inside. Yeah, there we go. Nine volt. Nine volt. Just like the magical musical thing, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't have any 9-volt batteries on hand, so we spent the next 10 minutes scouring Heinbach's studio for some piece of gear to steal a battery from. Eventually, we stumble on this wooden noise box, which looks like the perfect donor. Of course, I spent a solid 10 minutes making a brace of feedback with it first. Finally, we open it up and lay claim to its battery. Very, very simple. Oh, here we go. There we go. We got it going. You want to play? The, yeah. The, the wood is something else. It feels. It feels such. Looks like such a uh, art deco instrument. I think. Oh, you know how to play it immediately. Fun fact: the oscillator in this thing was actually designed by Serge Trepnin, who also created the Serge modular system. That's right in the other room. Like my instinct is to vibrate like like a violin. Yeah. But the way you do that is actually here. Yeah. Add a bit of overdrive. Sure. That oh, well. very nice. As I start playing, Heinbach sits down at the piano. I do my best to play some sort of melody. When Heinbach sent me the audio for this jam, he had titled it Elegy, which seems appropriate. All in all, a great little instrument, and I'm sure that it doesn't always sound so mournful. When one is producing music through experimentation, a key skill is being able to recognize when something beautiful or exciting is taking shape. This is a talent Heinbach has in spades. His studio contains so many sources of sound, rare synthesizers, test equipment, toys, and we'd be playing with some piece of gear, and one of us would do something and the sound would change, and he would hear something and just get so excited. I love that. That's unexpected. And then I would hear what he had heard and get excited myself. All in all, it was such a fruitful visit that I'm already looking to return to his studio soon to make more sounds together. Okay, I think that's it. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. Also, if you've not yet subscribed, now is a great time. I've got a ton of videos on the way. See you soon. Something you've got a you've got a like it sounds like a theme song. Yeah, it's a theme song, exactly. <laughs> <Berlin yeah>. trip. <laughs> yeah.